Hi everyone, this is Mr. Hall and this is a really quick video about balancing equations. Um, balancing equations when you first start off is really, really hard. It's one of the first things you have to learn mm -hmm. when you're moving on to doing quantitative chemistry and kind of underpins a lot of the chemistry you do anyway. And lots of students find it really, really difficult. I don't think there's um, like a magic bullet of how to do it. Um, I think the, the best thing you can do is simply to practice because the more practice you do, the more familiar the techniques that you have to use in order to get equations balance becomes and it becomes much more natural over time so practice makes perfect but hopefully this video will um, help you work out in the first instance and then give you the confidence to tackle um, some of the tricky problems you might come across so the objectives of this video really are to deduce a number of different elements on both sides of an equation I think that's one of the things that people find particularly difficult and also to balance chemical equations as well so just a couple of kind of key rules that you need to follow when you're balancing equations the first one is that when you're balancing, do not change the formulae, all right? So if you have a formula like H2O, you cannot change the two, all right? So that stays as it is. And the fact that there's no number next to the oxygen means you've got one of them and you can't change that. So you can't change it into H2O2 or H3O. You can't do that. The only thing you can do is add big numbers, which we call coefficients, to the front of the formula. So if you've got H2O, as I said before, you can't change the subscripts, but you can change the number at the front to like two or three or four or whatever it is to have more of those molecules. Okay? So let's get started with a few examples. So the first one I've got here is um, H2 plus O2, hydrogen, oxygen and they are reacting to create water, which is H2O. So in order to balance this, now the thing I like to do is I like to count the number of elements on the left and the right. And to, and when I start off, what I'll also be doing is showing pictures of, of what it would look like. So first off, you've got H2, which is basically a molecule of two hydrogen atoms bonded together like so. And you've got oxygen here, which is two oxygen atoms bonded together like so. And that creates H2O, which is hydrogen bonded to oxygen, bonded to hydrogen like so. Now, once I've got that in place, I can then work out the number of atoms on the left as well as on the right. So hydrogen, I've got two of them. You can see that from the formula as well. There's two hydrogens. So for hydrogen, there are two. Over here, I've also got two hydrogens. You can see in the picture as well as the formula. So hydrogen, there are two. Oxygen, there are two over here. So I'm going to put O, two. Over here, I've only got one of them, O, one. Okay. So that's the first thing you do. You have to kind of work out how many atoms you've got on the left and how many you've got on the right. Now, when I look at that, I can see instantly that there's less oxygens on the right than there is on the left. So that's the first thing I have to fix. So I'm going to put a two in front of that. And as a picture, what that basically means is you've got another molecule of H2O, another molecule of water. Now, because I've done that, I need to update the numbers um, on my on my tally which I've got over here. So instead I've got two hydrogens, I've got one, two, three, four hydrogens now. Instead of one oxygen, I've now got two. So now I've got some updated numbers. Now if I just double check my count so far, I can see that I've got two oxygens on the right, two on the left, so my oxygens are balanced. But my hydrogens, I've got four over here and only two here, so they're not balanced. So now I have to go back to this side and see what I can add to tally that up. Now I've got two hydrogens already, I need two more to make the four. The only way I can really do that is by adding another hydrogen molecule and then that becomes four and then then it's balanced now at the end what you might like to do is you might just like to double check uh, the numbers you've got on either side so i've got one oxygen molecule here that's fine i've got two molecules of hydrogen here so i have to put the two there now that's fine i've got four hydrogens here two oxygens there that's fine as well so the equation is balanced okay let's try another one um, here we've got chlorine reacting with sodium bromide in the displacement reaction to form bromine and sodium chloride. So let's draw it out first of all. So first off I've got my chlorine which looks like this and I've got my sodium bromide which looks like this. I've got my bromine molecule which looks like this and then my sodium chloride looks like this. Now I know that sodium chloride and sodium bromide are huge lattice structures but for the purpose of balancing and drawing like this is actually quite helpful. So let's do our count. Chlorine I've got one two over here, chlorine, I've only got one, so that's a big flag already. Sodium, I have one. Over here, sodium, I have one. Here, bromine, I have one. Ooh, one. And on the right-hand side, bromine, I've got two. So we've got a few things we can start with. Let's start with the chlorine. So I've got two chlorines over here. I've only got one over here. So to make that into a two, I have to add another one of these. Okay, that will give me two of those. And I'll draw it in to show you what that looks like. 
Now, because I've done that, I need to update my numbers. I've got two chlorine atoms now rather than one, so let's cross it out and put a two. I've got two sodiums now rather than one, let's cross that out, let's put a two. Now what I've got is a problem because I've got an imbalance of sodium because there's two over here, one over here, and bromine is still unbalanced, two over here, one over here. Let's do the sodium first of all. So if I go over to this side, I need another one sodium here, so I can do that by putting two of those. Now that means I have to draw it out, so Na, Br, like so, and I've now got two sodiums on this side rather than one, and I've got two bromines on this side rather than one. If I just double check my balancing, two and two of chlorine, balanced. 2 and 2 of sodium, balanced. 2 and 2 of bromine, balanced. And if you look at the equation, that also sort of backs it up too. So that works. Let's try another one. Okay, so here I've got magnesium and hydrochloric acid, and it's reacting to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen. If we to draw it out, that's magnesium on its own. Here it's hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, like so. Now it creates magnesium chloride that looks like this. Again, it's a huge lattice, but drawing it as a molecule for the purpose of balancing is helpful. And hydrogen looks like this. So let's do our count. Magnesium, there's only one over here. Magnesium, there's only one over here. And that's unlikely to change. Hydrogen, one. Over here, hydrogen, two. So that's already a big flag. You can see the two there. And then chlorine, I've got one of them. Over here, chlorine, I've got two. You can see that from the formula as well as either side of the picture. So how do I fix this? So my magnesium's fine, so I'm not going to touch that for now anyway, unless I have to. Let's look at hydrogen. I've got two over here, but only one over here. So in order to change that, I need to get another one to form two of them, and that's by drawing another one out. Now if I do that, I've got two hydrogens now. That's now balanced. I've got two chlorines now, which is the same as right-hand side, so that's now balanced. So the equation is balanced. Works nice and easy. Let's try another one. Xe plus F2 creating xenon tetrafluoride, I think. It's quite a rare molecule. If I was to draw this out, you've got Xe that looks like this. It's on its own. It's an atom. And then fluorine looks like that. And on the other side, I've got this very strange molecule that looks like this. It's something which you come across quite a lot in A-level, actually. It's got interesting bonding. Okay, so that's that. Now, if I was to do my tallying up, xenon, I've got one of them. Fluorine, I've got two of them. However, on the right-hand side, xenon, I've still got one, but fluorine, I've got four. One, two, three, and four. So, clearly with my xenon, I don't need to do anything with those, but my fluorine, I do. So let's get them balanced out. So I need to get another two on this side. The best way of doing that is by adding another two fluorine atoms like so, and that now creates four, but I've got two molecules, one here, one here. So I have to put two in front of there, and now it's balanced. Now, let's try one more. Um, on the left-hand side, I've got this kind of phosphorus oxide, and that creates phosphorus and oxygen. It's kind of a decomposition reaction. So if I was to draw it out, it would probably look something like this. I don't quite know offhand how it looks. And then you've got phosphorus, and you've got oxygen. Okay, don't worry too much about what it actually looks like. I mean, the, the key thing is that the number of atoms on the left and the right is, is the same. I mean, that's, that's what you want to be really focusing on. So phosphorus on the left-hand side, I've got two. Over here on the right-hand side, I've got one, two, three, and four. Okay, so that works. Over on the left, I've got three oxygen atoms. And on the right, I've got two oxygen atoms. Okay, so the first thing I would do, and this is an interesting point, when you, have ox when you have an element isolated like this, trying to leave that last to balance, I would say, particularly if it's quite small. Let's sort this out first of all. I've got four phosphoruses here and two over here. I need another two phosphoruses this side. The only way I can do that is by having another one of these. So if I was to draw it out at the bottom here, it would be another phosphorus oxide. Now that would give me one, two, three, four phosphoruses, which is good because that balances with the right and that works. However, that would give me one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens, which is way out of balance of this one. So if I go to oxygen now, I need to balance oxygen now. The way to do that is I need to have six oxygens in total on this side, and that would look something like that. Now that gives me six oxygens, which is great, but it's three molecules, so I have to put a three there. And if you look, three times two gives you the six, which you actually have. So that equation is now balanced. Okay, um, I'm actually going to skip that one. I want to just talk a little bit about balancing and polyatomic ions. Now, um, a polyatomic ion is an ion which is made up of more than one atom. And these you'll come across regularly in the chemistry course, course that you're doing. So for example, we've got OH-, which is hydroxide, 
NO3 minus, which is nitrate, SO42 minus, which is sulfate, PO43 minus, which is phosphate, and then finally CO32 minus, which is carbonate. And when you're balancing with these, try to treat them as one thing. And I'll do one example just to show you how you would deal with it. So, yeah, I've just emphasized it there. So when balancing equations with polyatomic ions, treat the polyatomic ion as one thing when you're balancing and doing your count. So, for example, if we look at this example, I've got magnesium plus nitric acid, and that forms magnesium nitrate and hydrogen. So it's magnesium plus... I don't put the plus there, and I've got hydrogen, uh, well, it's a nitric acid, but I'm going to write it like this, and I'm going to treat the NO3 as one thing, okay? And then I've got magnesium nitrate, which has got two of these nitrates stuck to it, that's what the two means there, and I've got hydrogen. Now I do my count. So magnesium, I've got one of them. Over here, magnesium, I have one of them. Hydrogen, one. Over here, hydrogen, two. However, nitrate, see, I haven't broken it down into the nitrogen and the oxygen. I've just kept the nitrate as one thing. I've got one nitrate, you can see. And over here, because it's in brackets with the two, I've got two nitrates on this side. Okay, so let's get started. So magnesium, you can see they're balanced. So I don't need to do anything with that. I can leave that as it is. So just extend that line. For hydrogen, it's not balanced because I've got two over here and one over here, so I need another hydrogen atom. So to do that, I need to add another one of these molecules to do like so. Now, if I do that, I've got two of them now. I've got two hydrogens and I've got two nitrates. Okay, so I'm going to cross that into a two. Now, if you look at the equation, this actually balances out. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, and that is the same over here, so that's balanced. Nitrates, two of them over here, two of them over here. So that's also balanced, so my equation is now balanced. I think with polyatomics, that's probably where you may get the most problems, but if you treat it just as one thing, it makes the balancing so much easier. And that's the end of it. So best of luck with your um, balancing of equations, and...